Hi, Hi, and welcome to First Draft. Um, we are on air for the month of September, and tonight we're going to be talking about decoding social media. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited. We have such a great panel of guests with us tonight. Um, of course, myself, uh, Julia Kelly, and Alexis Ann are all here as usual, but we are also joined by Molly O'Keefe, Julie Valerie, and Cody Gary. Um, so I am going to let them introduce themselves. Um, Let's start actually with Cody. If you want to introduce yourself, um, let us know what genre you, you write in and what you're drinking tonight. Oh, me and me first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Cody Gary, and I write contemporary romance. And I am actually drinking just a Coke, but if I were drinking it, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's special right. occasion rum right there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right, and Molly, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Molly O'Keefe. I write contemporary romance as well. And I'm drinking um, this really amazing beer from a local brewery. I can't say the name. It's all <laughs> baseball themed. So if you know that baseball term, feel free to let us know. But it's a really good oatmeal brown ale. Enjoy the heck out of it. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> Go local beer. <laughs> um, and Julie, I'll throw it over to you. Hi there, I'm Julie Valerie, and at Merry, <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> at Merry Christmas recommendation, I'm drinking an IPA, which is, I understand, the drink of September, the drink of the month. Nice. Are you drinking one or six? I <laughs> want to go. It depends on how long we go tonight. Do you want me to work on all six? Or <laughs> it be like a challenge. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then Alexis, why don't you um, introduce yourself as well? Hi, I'm Alexis Ann. I write contemporary and erotic romance. And tonight I'm actually drinking an extra special beer in this fancy glass here. It's uh, made by one of our friends and it's banana peanut butter beer. What? <laughs> That's <I know>. awesome. <laughs> Is it really sweet? I mean, I, you, you, you have to say it's good because it's your friends, but is it, it really it, sweet? It's a little bit sweet. It's very, it's almost like a Guinness quality to it. Like it's, yeah, it, it looks it's dark. hearty and it's, mm -hmm. it's very <laughs> nutty. Super oh. peanut buttery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put, some Put some Nutella on a piece of toast or something. Oh. Peanut butter, banana, Nutella, maybe some marshmallow. Is nice. that kind of like a whole dessert course? I love it. It yeah, does. We're doing we're doing pairings. I love that. <laughs> um, and Julia, what are you drinking? I'm uh, I'm Julia Kelly, and uh, I write um, contemporary and historical romance under that name, and I write uh, Victorian erotic romance under the name Vivian Thorne, and I uh, literally you do sprinted into my apartment. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, I sprinted in my into my apartment two minutes before we were going to go on air and immediately poured a glass of wine and then set my computer up. So I'm um, drinking a Sauvignon Blanc from California uh, because I literally was in a taxi about five minutes ago. So <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. cheers. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I am Mary Christa Escobar. I write women's fiction, uh, lighthearted women's fiction. And I am drinking also an IPA. I have the Ballast Point IPA. Let me get it in the shot. Where are you? Um, and it's in a can, which I love. Beer in a can. It's awesome. <laughs> um, but it's actually uh, a California beer, so I'm excited that my local awesome beer shop carries it here in Virginia. So yes. good stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much time we're supposed to dedicate to talking about beer. I could do quite a bit. But why do you like beer, why do you like beer in a can? Like it's what, just like what? fun. It's just I, fun. Because um, <laughs> for a long time you couldn't get craft beer in a can, and so it's nice to get really good craft beers in cans. It's awesome. Yeah, I guess that's true. They always yeah. come in bottles. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> cool. Um, well, as I mentioned tonight, we are talking about social media, um, which is why we're drinking. Uh, why we're drinking? Probably <laughs> 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 the Why we're talking so much about our beer and our wine, uh, and why we have six packs and large glasses. That's <laughs> why so I keep crying. <laughs> um, so I feel like social media is kind of everybody, everyone's favorite thing to love and hate simultaneously. So hopefully tonight we will share some tips for things that work for us um, and have you come away maybe figuring out what's right for you uh, on social media. 
so I thought we'd kick it off with just kind of talking about what social media do you use? Um, so uh, let's see. I'll just kind of go down my line here. Um, Molly, you're kind of right next to me. Can you just talk a little bit about which social media platforms you use and if you have a favorite? Uh, do I have a favorite? I use I use Facebook. I use Twitter. Oh, are you shoving aside right there, Cody? <laughs> Was it your dog or kid? <laughs> I have a dog right here who's dying to like get in the shot so I can appreciate a little chaos. Um, I, I use Facebook, I use Twitter, um, and I've just started Instagram. I have a um, really, really terrible blog that I neglect. And hate, love and hate, mostly hate. Uh, and then I use, actually, I, I'm on Goodreads quite a bit. I find Goodreads to be a pretty positive space for me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is really here. Okay. That's it for me. Well, can the dog in. <laughs> yes, your dog can come. <laughs> We've got cats and dogs. <laughs> We're a pet friendly show. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Julie. How about you? What um, what platforms are you using, and do you have a favorite? Uh, well, I I blog a lot on my on my blog, and then I think probably second favorite, tied for second, would be Goodreads because that's where all the readers are and the writers. Um, but I really love Twitter. I just really love trying to figure out. I think it's the writer in me that likes trying to figure out how to say something in 140 characters. I also mm -hmm. like Twitter because it's really good at. Um, Directing traffic, I think of it as the traffic cop that points people in directions in a really tight, efficient way to interesting things in the blogosphere. So I really find it's super, super useful for that. Short and sweet. It's also probably, I think, the friendliest for fostering communications and networking and meeting people and um, canvassing a large space and small snippets. So I just find it's really efficient for me. Um, but mostly I just enjoy using it. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. I um, had always decided that I was not going to ever do Facebook or back in the day MySpace. I was going to be you know, off the grid in terms of not posting a lot of personal things about myself. But um, when I started the book blog in 2013, I found it was almost impossible to um, ignore Facebook. So I reluctantly started a personal page which is almost exclusively for books um, and then I have a, an author page that I completely neglect um, because a little bit of frustration because Facebook doesn't distribute your content after they went public so I'm kind of feeling like um, why am I building content for them and they're not mm -hmm. distributing it so I've kind of I need to be better but it's kind of the stepchild right now for me personally um, and I really like Google Plus because while Google is not um, invest in a lot of their um, energies towards Google Plus like they could and probably should, I find it really helps drive search engine results. Um, and I like it because it's a real clean, fresh space. So I wish it could become more than it is. I think they tried to compete with Facebook and because they entered late and decided they couldn't, they'd rather, if they're not going to be number one, they don't want to you know, yeah, much towards it, which I think is too bad because it's a strong enough platform and its connection to, so, to search engine um, mm -hmm. makes it a valuable place to invest your time. And lastly, I would say Pinterest because I like pretty things and I like clicking on pictures of books and bookshelves and <laughs> bookstores, but I really don't put much energy at all into Pinterest trying to chase down followers and things like that. I just kind of enjoy a creative space to collect things that I think are nice to look at. And um, that about sums it up. I'm not on Instagram yet. I kind of just my kids are, my teenagers are, but yeah, I'm not at the moment. Definitely. Cool. What about you, Cody? Well, um, I am most active on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I I enjoy Facebook. Um, I actually have a page, and then I have an author profile. So I can have like friends and host parties and things like that on the profile, and then I have the page where fans can follow me, and I can put most of my like author uh, author information. And then um, I just
Yeah. <laughs> Alexis, how about you? Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> everything. I can answer that for her. She has right? everything. I know. <laughs> I enjoy social media. Uh, it comes from my background in my last career where I was in charge of social media, so I was already heavily invested in social media, um, and primarily Facebook, so I do spend most of my time on Facebook. Oh. And Look, we have a guest. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I spend a lot of time on Facebook because I get it, I understand it, um, as opposed to Twitter, which I enjoy, but almost everybody I know on Twitter is a writer, so it's not really very social as far as interacting with readers are concerned for me, but those are the two places I'm most active other than Instagram, which is my, I just love Instagram so much because I love pictures, and Instagram is just, it's really easy to use, so those are the three places I am most frequently. Did anybody else lose picture? No. Uh, no, I think we're no. all good here. No, yeah, we're all good. Okay. If you can hear us, usually, usually we're stumbling through. Okay. Okay. So sometimes Google Hangouts gets a little hiccupy. Yeah. Yep. We can see you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Julia, how about you? What what platforms do you use? Um, so I I'm also kind of on everything I could come up with, and I use them to varying degrees. Um, Twitter's the one I, I'm definitely most comfortable on, but I also found, um, like somebody else mentioned, that Twitter is mostly people that I know through writing. Um, mostly other authors, if not, you know, editors and, and things like that, which is great, and it's a great kind of cocktail party environment, but it's not really helpful for reader outreach. So um, I also do social media for my day job, and um, wish that I didn't have to be on Facebook, um, but because I have to be on it for my day job, because I have to be on it for writing, I kind of am trying to have a really good attitude about it and embrace it. I don't know how <laughs> I am at that. Um, but, so I have pages and profiles for both names. Um, and then also, um, I use Pinterest mostly for discovery process in the beginning of books, kind of looking at pretty frocks and things like that. And um, I like Instagram. I do admit to sporadically Instagramming a ton of stuff and then like falling by the wayside if really what I'm doing is going to work and then coming home and writing because I don't know how many times you guys want to see my keyboard. Um, <laughs> but I should get more creative with it. Um, and you will probably see me start to Instagram drinks from now on because that seems to be the only other variation. Um, and then the other thing I use, um, again, not as often recently, in, is Tumblr. And I, had an, I have an author Tumblr, which I rarely use. The one that I really use is actually called Really Old Frocks. And it's just a Tumblr reblogging dresses that I found while looking for dresses to describe for various um, for various books, and um, that I've really enjoyed. And that actually has been by far the most engagement that I've had. I think probably because it's less broad, um, overarching kind of whatever I like and is going through my mind at the time, and it's more focused. So people who like. Victorian dresses and uh, really want to see that can follow it and know exactly what they're going to get. Um, I find so. Tumblr is very fandom based, so Victorian yes. seems like something that mm -hmm. would be high. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Victorian is is very well represented on um, <laughs> on Tumblr in many ways in many areas. <laughs> and guys with beards. And dudes with beards. And man, and yeah. man buns. And sex. <laughs> yep. There's something other than sex on Tumblr. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, Wait a second. <laughs> oh. What about you, Mary Chris? <laughs> um, <laughs> Somebody has to ask the host, right? That's right. True. That's true. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I also blog really regularly, so I, I blog weekly. Um, that's probably one of my my biggest outreach um, pieces. I also use Facebook. Um, Twitter and Instagram. I'm also very much a reluctant Facebook person, um, and I have trouble, and maybe this is something we may want to talk about later, juggling kind of the personal page and the author page. I was never a very, I wasn't putting out a lot of super personal stuff on my personal page 
and I have an author page, so I just kind of post to my author page as if it is my personal page. Um, again, because it's honestly mostly pictures of food and beer, um, so I'm not too concerned, uh, you know, about privacy in that way. Um, I do like Instagram. Uh, I just started using that around December of this year, and I think, I don't know, I just like this idea of little visual snippets of your life, and I like looking at it, it's just, it's kind of a quick, you can pick it up on a quick break and sort of scroll through what other people are doing and see really interesting things. Um, again, lots of food and, and beer, <laughs> um, and I can fall down that rabbit hole for a long time. Um, so Twitter, I, I agree with everything that, that folks have said about that being more kind of like a cocktail party connecting with other authors. It's really good for networking, and I actually love that about it, um, but I'm not sure it's as great for connecting with readers. Um, similarly, I have to be careful with my Twitter. I use Hootsuite, and I have to keep things in feeds because I, you know, if, if I look at too many pictures on Food 52 site, I'm just going to fall down that rabbit hole and want to yeah. cook all the things and <laughs> drink all the cocktails. And so, you know, I have to be a little bit careful with that fire hose that's Twitter and try to control um, a little bit for that. But I would say those are my three biggest ones. Um, looking at that, I'm really curious about Goodreads. Um, yes, several please. of you Somebody asked yes. about that. <laughs> so I think, like, I, I think I'm speaking for Julia and Lexi, and I that none of us. I mean, I'm on it. I have tried to figure out how to use it, but can one of you or all of you kind of let us know how you're using Goodreads and and how um, that is a good platform to connect with readers? Because I've heard that, and so to hear you all mention it, I'm like. Awesome. Now I have three people trapped in this chat with me who can tell me like how to navigate this thing. <laughs> and also how to navigate it in such a way that you don't overstep that boundary between right. readers and reviews and all the things that we're cautioned about and kind of also wanting to interact in some sort of way. Um, I no, I was just going to say, almost all of my social media experience is, like, through accident. So, I, like, I never go into anything with a plan. And I, I have found that Goodreads is almost exclusively sincerity-based. Like, if I, like, it, it is not a place to pitch. It's not a place to promo. It is a place to, to, to truly, truly talk books. And then, you know, the, the side effect of that is forming these really powerful relationships with readers who read the same stuff you do, right? So, and, and I, that's, that's been the, I feel like a, a corner's been turned on it for me, which is just all of that, that happening, you know, just these people that I was sort of randomly talking to on, on Goodreads, it's now sort of turned into a community that um, is, is tangible. That's it. That's what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, weigh in for a minute on Goodreads? Um, yeah. I think Goodreads offers a unique um, opportunity in the blogosphere because we all have our own blogs, our own websites, which is kind of like our own home. That's where our little space is. And then we use different social media for different reasons. We were just mentioning how much Instagram is great for looking at the pretty pictures and Pinterest and that twist, um, twister. Twitter is good for <laughs> um, meeting people and directing traffic. But the one spot on social media, well, there's more than one library thing in different places, but the biggest place where readers are is Goodreads. So I think to myself, one, it's really great for me, what, for my book blog, for record keeping, because I can keep my bookshelves all yeah. organized. And when I'm reading a book, then the writers that I've made committed to, they know that I'm reading it, they know that the review should be coming in a couple of days, and it helps me to keep track of my reading goal. Um, and then when I post my reviews at the bottom, when I always give the disclaimer that I received an advanced reader copy of this book in exchange for an honest review, I always say something like, um, for complete coverage, go to my book blog. So it gives me an opportunity to put a, a link at the bottom of the review. I don't think it's wise for book reviewers when they just plain put their link instead of a review because that's, that's too much of a baiting you know, somebody to go in the direction of their book blog. But after I've written the entire review, at the bottom along with the disclosure, I'll put a link to my website. And I have gotten some, definitely have gotten some traffic from Goodreads, um, both reader traffic as well as writer traffic from that. But I think to not have a presence on Goodreads, because it is kind of hard to figure out, and you're kind of wondering, what am I getting out of this? Why am I spending my time here? I think you have to be there, because that's like the bookstore in, in um, 
in the blogosphere. That's where the readers are. That's where the writers are. That's where the books are. All the other clutter is pushed out. It's just for people who love books. And you can't ignore the fact that they're owned by Amazon. So because of that, similar to why I like good um, Google Plus for what it does for search engine, I feel like I have to be on Goodreads because of its relationship with its parent company, which is um, Amazon. And I think that we're going to continue to see Goodreads change um, as Amazon puts its feelers all over that all over that platform. I think on my rainy day, if I had a lot of time and was going to go into other social media areas or devote more of my already busy schedule towards that, I'd probably look at competitors to Goodreads and build presence in other places, um, like Library Thing and all the different books by, um, places, because sometimes I feel like I'm on social media and I'm connecting with other writers, or I'm connecting yeah. with other book bloggers. You feel like you're connecting with people within the industry, and if we're spinning our wheels and doing that all day long, where do we find our readers? And I think it's in those, it's in those places. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought on, the, on Goodreads. Super record keeping. We get to see each other's bookshelves. I mean, what other place do we get to see that? True. Very true. Mm <laughs> the <laughs> remix version, version that, that. Yeah, that, point that point home. Home. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> So speaking so, speak of readers speak and, and um, reader uh, outreach, reader, I'm, I'm getting echoed too, echo so I hope it's just as it does it tell um, before um, go crazy. Go crazy. Uh, I, one place that I think one that you know, Lexi and Mary Chris and, and I definitely are on, and I'm wondering about whether you have as well as Wattpad, which is a little bit different, but it definitely falls within the social media category. Um, does anybody else have experience with that? Maybe one of the three of us wants to talk about that as well. I wish there was a Wattpad for an older readership. I think it's really just a phenomenal platform. I think it's attracting a specific age of reader. And I would love to see like a um, mature, more mature version of Wattpad, or if Wattpad somehow split um, its efforts in a clear direction and brought, um, you know, more, more, you know, it's such a strong presence for YA and for um, new adults. But I think that um, I think there's a cap really to the age of the people that are actually using Wattpad. And I've uh, I've done web searches before, you know typed in Wattpad competitors, Wattpad mature, Wattpad older, Wattpad, trying to figure out who out there is doing a Wattpad um, thing for a little bit of an older reader. Um, Medium.com is kind of cool. Um, there's some really high quality writing there. It's a great place to put out samples of writing, but it's not exactly a, a really good spot for releasing like chapters of your book and building your readership mm -hmm. quite like Wattpad does. Wattpad's phenomenal. This kind of sense for me, um, my readership is a little bit older than what I think is found on Wattpad. I muted her to see if it helped. Oh wait, okay. does it? Yeah, I think the echo is gone now. Okay, okay, let's see. Okay, okay. okay. So give me a thumbs up if you want me to um, be talking while you're fixing the micro microphones. I don't want to mess anything up. Right. But right. if I'm the only one that's not echoing, I can start talking. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so think I think you should, Julie. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk and then just interrupt me when okay. I go on too okay. long. I brought something. I have this. Um, 
I hang this above my computer, or well, not kind of like I tape it to the wall, kind of off to the wall by my computer. And um, up at the top, it has these little um, kind of reminders for me when I'm on social media, and um, they don't really mean anything to anybody except to me. Um, layer when I sit down to like do something layering, it's when I take more than one social media platform and layer them together. So if I were to create a Vine video and put it on my blog, I've layered the Vine technology with my blog. Or if I were to post a Vine onto um, Twitter or Facebook, or if I'm on Twitter and instead of just tweeting a link to my um, website, I might go over and grab something from Facebook and tweet it out. Um, and sometimes I'll do all three. So sometimes I'll post um, an image on Twitter and then um, post it over onto Facebook. So basically when you engage the, um, more than one social media together inside of one function or one activity or one announcement, um, I, think it, I think it runs their algorithms in a certain way and I think it helps to build influence through clout, but I don't know, nobody really knows how clout works. Um, but I sometimes remind myself to look for ways to cross, to, to layer it and use more than just one social media platform um, all at once. One example I'm thinking about is I did a blog post about writing prompts and inside the blog post I embedded um, my, my Pinterest board. I created a Pinterest board just on writing prompts and then I used the Pinterest board and I embedded it into the blog and then when I was tweeting out that information I've layered three technologies together to help boost that content. Um, point is pretty um, pretty simple. It's kind of like, um, I think Twitter does it best, at, you know, the traffic cop concept. Twitter's always pointing you through links and conversations to different places and happening, trending issues, things that are happening now. Um, but I also try to be mindful of in what direction I'm pointing. So I know sometimes you do a blog post, you send out a tweet, um, but sometimes I think, do I want to direct this blog post to Facebook first and then copy that link? and then tweet that link from Facebook so that my Twitter people go to my Facebook page first and then they link into my blog. Usually what you want to do is send somebody directly to your landing page on your website. But I have found sometimes when I want to cycle through my audiences and different social medias, I'll intentionally point in a specific direction. Like if you wanted to build your followers, followers on Google+. Plus, Like when I was tweeting about this event right now, I use my Google Plus link a lot because this is a Google Hangout. Um, so I'm always trying to be mindful of which direction I'm pointing in. Um, before, during, and after. Um, I think sometimes people um, miss opportunities to tweet before a big event, during an event, or after an event. And so I um, try to you know, do some promoting, if not Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever social media before the event leading up to it, you know, like a week before. Um, you know, definitely the day of and two days before. But I also schedule um, content to go out during the event. So I kind of pre-schedule tweets to be released live during this hour um, to drive traffic to it or just to kind of keep content going out. And usually when I'm doing that, I'll, I'll cover the topic that's being um, talked about. So all, everything that I'm releasing during this hour has to do with social media. Um, and then afterwards, I'll wrap up and you know schedule some things to come out today and tomorrow. Um, looping is when I kind of track back and recap. Um, I think sometimes there's really great content on people's websites, and you kind of you write the blog post and then you tweet it out or put it on Facebook or or send it in this direction, and then you kind of forget about it. But then I also thought, my gosh, I worked really hard to create a lot of content on my blog, and sometimes I'll sit down just as a concentrated effort to go back through my book reviews, a book review I might have posted a year ago, and retweet it and bring it back up and bring it live because. One, it's good for the writer that I covered, and it's great to continue promoting a book, but because um, I worked really hard to create the content, I don't want it to only have a lifespan of a couple of days. Um, AM, PM is my little tip to remind myself of um, readers that um, are in Australia or the United Kingdom or California, Alaska. I have lots of good friends in those places that I've met over Twitter, and I hope to meet them someday in real life. But I think to myself, when I'm asleep, they're awake, and so I'm conscious of time zones, and I sometimes deliberately put content out that I know I'm not awake for, um, but just to touch base with them during their time zone. I think they probably um, 
have to do late night and early morning tweeting to keep in contact with friends in the United States, and I think it would just—it's kind of polite to do it the other way to be, you know, to be aware of when other people are awake when when you're asleep. And then the rest of the—I don't know if you guys can see it. This is just. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. I don't know if the mics are fixed, and if you want me to stop talking about so this. So I think I think we're we might have figured out a solution. Um, so let's you check. Just run through. Everybody okay? Yep. 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 <laughs> okay. So I think just so we know what's going on, I think actually, Julie, the reason yours wasn't echoing is because there might be something there that's causing it. So we're gonna mute you, but if you need to talk, like, we'll when we cycle around to you, we'll unmute you so we can hear you. She's saying. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, great. So that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for like kind of giving us an interlude there. And I think it is smart to have a strategy for what you're doing with social media and actually, you know, having a little bit of a plan for times of day. Um, you know, that's something I think about on Twitter. I sometimes post something really specific about the weather in my neighborhood or, you know, like, hey, this is a great book for a rainy day, and then I'm like, well, if you're in Australia, it's probably not raining. Um, <laughs> so, you know, being, being that joke of, bombed in Australia. Right. <laughs> yes. So, you know, some things are like you can't be too specific. So I think it's like really smart to have kind of a visual reminder of of all of those things. So um, very cool. I guess um, we've touched on this a little bit, but. Um, there's always new social media, and I know we were sort of teasing uh, Alexis about, you're on everything, you're on all the <laughs> platforms. But how do you decide? Like, when there's a brand new thing that comes out, like, how do you make that decision about whether you want to jump on that or wait for a little while? Or how do you, how do you juggle that? Because it can feel really overwhelming. I feel like there's a new, like, all my students, I work at a university when I'm not writing, and they're all using Snapchat, and I have no idea <laughs> what that is, and I'm going to have to figure it out, but, you know. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm going to interact with them, I'm going to have to figure it out, sort of, what it is, but anyway. Soon that's the only way we'll communicate, is through Snapchat anyway. Right, so. right, I mean, I'm convinced I, I'm not going to like it, but I was convinced I wasn't going to like Twitter, and it's my favorite thing, so, right. anyway. Yeah. Um, so, what do you do about that? I treat it kind of like when you, you meet people, um, you get a vibe sometimes that like, ooh, this, this could be my thing, like it speaks my language here, or no, just no, I'm going to sit back and I'm going I'm to observe and see what happens here before I jump on this, and then sometimes you have to just be mindful of what's going on in your life. If you're on deadline that you're already two weeks late on, and then that means you're already almost late for your next deadline, and your kids are sick, and your husband's out of town, don't try any social media, that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find I find social media to actually really be a like I I mean I I listen to people talk about how much they enjoy it and I'm I, I find it really stressful. I find it a um I just find it really stressful. So like when a new thing comes in, like Pinterest, like everybody was on Pinterest, and I took one look at Pinterest, and I was like, that that's like that, that's days of my life gone, like just gone, <laughs> vanished. It's nothing but kitchens and chicken breast recipes for the rest of my life. So like it is a matter of like knowing what your time is, and and since I don't feel like an authority on any platform, like it's it's just a matter of like knowing that's a bad idea, or I can do this one, or this one isn't awful, or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> That's how I felt about Sue when it came along. I was like, oh, this uh, is really awesome, and then it wasn't. <laughs> and then it very suddenly was not. Halfway through that first date, it just went, it went bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a big uh, triangle scheme, sort of. Mm. Hmm. Is that the right thing? Pyramid. <laughs> Pyramid. 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 Triangle. <laughs> Pyramid. Julie, how do you deal with the stuff that comes along that's, that's new and um, is 
<laughs> you already have a very extensive social media schedule, so yeah. I'm assuming that you're kind of you may be at at your max for for what you can do, but maybe not. Maybe you are willing to to try new things. Um, I would agree that. Um, oh, am I okay? Yeah, I would agree that there is always something coming around, and I early on read somewhere or somebody told me, you know, don't go into a new shiny object, a new space just because it's neat and you want to have a presence everywhere because there's a side of my personality that feels like, oh, I have to be in all these places. I need to go over there and have a presence over there and, oh, that's so neat. I want to play with that little shiny new toy. But um, somebody very wisely or maybe I read it said early on, don't go in unless you're really going to commit to it. Um, that's why I, still, I feel guilty about sometimes just flat out ignoring Facebook because <laughs> I just have never really liked it to begin with. Um, I'm on it because of the book blog and it just always felt like we left high school. I, I don't care if people like me or not and the, it just was a crazy. I never felt natural. I still don't feel natural um, in Facebook um, but I do, I do like Twitter. So I'm more interested in not trying new platforms that come along um, but trying to learn how to use the ones I'm currently on better and more efficient because it is a time suck. I can sit there and like look up and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, I, I haven't done any writing. I've only been pursuing these running in circles on these social media platforms. So I've gotten really good at um, being super efficient on scheduling and on task and I do a little timer and that's what this little calendar is. I just look up whatever day it is and like this one says, um, Photos and um, hashtag the uh, the Friday follow hashtag. So I'll have a specific task each day, and I'll spend no more than 15, 20 minutes doing that particular task. And because you can buffer and schedule things, I'll focus only on finding new and interesting people to follow, or checking who's recently followed me so that I can follow them back. So I know that on that day, I'm going to do a focused effort at the whole follow engine. Um, or I might just be um, canvassing really good people to retweet or really interesting things to retweet. But I won't flood the market right in that instant with all these retweets. I'll space them out. But I know by using this calendar that every day there's 15 or 20 minutes. Usually I'm drinking coffee. I'm still in my pajamas. I haven't got my day going. I'm still kind of cruising around. I'll do these tiny little efforts so that over the course of the week, over the course of the month, I have done all these little things. I've quoted out some, um, I mean, I've tweeted out or posted quotes or little cartoons or something funny or an original thought or a link to a, my blog, blog post or somebody else's or I've retweeted their content. I look at my cheat sheet. Um, I make sure that I've, I'm saying something that's educational, something that's funny. So I've got all these little topics spread out so that in a given day I only have to spend 15 or 20 minutes on one or two of them and I spread them out, scheduling them throughout the month so that overall in any given day I kind of have a mix of following people and a mix of um, retweeting people and a mix of something funny, a mix of something hopefully educational or useful. Um, but I'm not sitting down on a Wednesday trying to find all those different things on the checklist and on a Wednesday right. trying to you know, be smart in all these different areas. I'm just basically on a Tuesday focusing on humorous things and humorous things only but scheduling them throughout a 30-day period. So in the end, over a month, it's a really balanced collection of things that are 99% about books. I really don't go outside of the book world. So I, I, that's where I say focus, but I make sure that the type of media on my focus topic um, is different and varied. Because some people respond to humorous things. Other people want information. Um, other people want to connect. Everybody's in it for a different reason. So if you produce things for all these different audiences and for all their motivations and their reasons for being there, you you can, you know, connect with more people and have a more meaningful experience. But key is scheduling things out and trying to stop after fifteen or twenty minutes and or half an hour, hour at the most, and get back to writing. Um, I will say that scheduling was a really transformative like I, I always knew about it, but like finally doing it, finally doing it, like all of the things that we're told we should do and never do, finally <laughs> scheduling a month out of like some, some kind of content, right? Like it was, it was just like, duh, I should have done that a long time ago. <laughs> no, but yeah, that was me, a big deal. Don't tell me you pre-schedule all those hotties that you post because I like to think that, that you're like struck in the moment. And you're like, I'm going to share this hottie right now. <laughs> the good morning. The yes, yes. Your good morning. 
Totally scheduled. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now I like I like to have a theme for the week. This week is man bun, which is Ooh. weird. I know. I'm, it's true. I'm deeply fascinated. But yeah, no. Scheduled. But that's to me. That's a perfect example. Sorry that, that you're bubble is burst there, uh, Lexi, but I think that's the perfect example of something to schedule. Like if, if you have a theme of something that you're going to do, you know, it it isn't something you have to necessarily interact with in the moment or be like super spontaneous about. If you know, you know, I'm going to post this picture of hot guys with man buns this week, like you just schedule that. You can like have a monthly... As you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's no need... You know, there's pieces of social media you want to be able to interact with naturally, and then there's places where scheduling is really like makes sense when you have an event coming up, or you know, you're going to post a motivational quote every Monday. I do social media a little bit for my job as well, and we do a motivational Mondays, and you can schedule those out for like three months. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no need to like do it every Monday, and then it's just on autopilot. So yeah, I would agree. Hey. A lot with Facebook parties. Can you do some of this stuff with that, or is it really like you do have to be in the moment? Certainly in the run up, I'm assuming you can do some setup, but. What was the um I don't know, are you guys reading the blogs, the get it together blogs? Oh yeah. The yeah. Blog post, I know that you guys are in a, a lot of those, but it's like that is the writer's life right there. Just I, like a dog and the, yeah. Yes, how, it's so true. <laughs> I love how every post begins with, I have no idea what I'm doing, but here's what I'm doing. And I do these twenty million things and somehow they all get done. I don't know how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need to include in my post that when this goes off, I'm finishing my post for tomorrow. So clearly I do not have it together. <laughs> No. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> uh, you totally you interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, a piece of that, um, and um, it's kind of like Julie's talking about, like, scheduling and having set things that you want to do each day. I have a pretty rigid structure for my blog posts. I mean, I kind of vary around, but I try to keep them to 250 words, um, which really helps me because it, it doesn't feel like... I used, to, I used to really dread doing it, and I was like, oh, I have this big thing I have to write. No one's going to want to read it. But if you keep it to a short amount. I'm like, okay, I have to write 250 words, which as I tell students I work with, that's like half a page. <laughs> like it's not yeah, really. So, you know, it helps me to have that to kind of try to keep it at that 250 words. And then for me, I've, I've struggled a lot too with like, what do I blog about? Like nobody really, I, I don't feel like anyone wants to know about sort of my day in, day out life. And there's this tendency when you blog every week to just be like, well, today, you know, to almost make it diary-like. Yeah. And so I've I've looked for how can I bring in themes. Um, so that's kind of I, I love beer and food and I need an outlet for that. And so I'm I try to bring stories from breweries or pair I pair a book and a beer every month. You know, I, I try to bring that in to kind of give it a little bit of consistency and theme and also make it something I'm not gonna dread doing. Um, but it but it has taken me 
a number of years <laughs> of blogging to get there. <laughs> You're a really good example of trial and error because we've been following your blog for like what three years now. And yeah. You've been trying to consistently do it week by week and, and you've tried out different themes and things and you've talked about exhaustion from doing it and running out of content and I feel like especially lately you've really hit a really good stride with your beer and book pairings and your your newsletters and the different things that are going out. You've tried all these different things. <laughs> yes. You really and finally it's working. It's so big. Yes. Booze. <laughs> Booze is always the answer. <laughs> but and no, it's amazing you. that like once you find that thing though, like whatever it is that you you can convey with a certain amount of, you know, excitement. I mean right. it, it does it, two hundred and fifty words writes itself. It does, and it's a theme. I try to have characters in my books who enjoy beer, and so it kind of fits in. I, I, it's loosely tied in to my blog, too. Yeah. Julie, I know you life. blog a lot as well, and I actually went onto your blog when I was setting up the first draft RSVP post, the kind of, this is what we're doing for this month, and I had one of those moments of being like, oh, wow, okay, <laughs> she blogs a lot, and that is <laughs> so impressive and also baffling to somebody. I also struggle with, I, I enjoy blogging and it is the first thing, it's like exercise, it's the first thing that goes mm -hmm. by the wayside when I'm on deadline and so I'm curious to know how you keep on track and then also how you use that for interaction. We've talked a lot about mm -hmm. um, kind of getting content out into the world and I'm really curious to hear about how you guys use that to then interact and kind of pull people in. Oh, okay, so um, Mary Chris, I don't know if you were in the Hugh Howie um, presentation at the recent James River Writers Conference last October. Mm -hmm. He had a really good point where he said, you, you know, the only place you really own and control your content is on your own website. D Facebook can delete your page in an instant, and all of those contacts, all of the everything that you've ever posted there, and all the people you're connected with can disappear in a second because that belongs to Facebook. Same with Twitter. Same with all of the other places. They can just delete you. The only thing that's really uniquely yours is your website. And so I kind of figured, well, okay, good. So that's where I've invested a lot of my time, putting a lot of my content. He also had said if you ever find yourself in a comment section somewhere writing a lot and you really had a lot to say, that that might signal you to a blog post or something that you should move that content and publish that content onto your website. I really have enjoyed the website um, as a place to make it social and meet people. I put in a plug-in in my comment section. so. If you um, leave a comment on one of my blog posts, your links to your websites will show up. And I'll often just go through my comments and click on to other people's links because they left a comment on my blog and go and leave comments on their blogs. And I know that some people have come back and have found other people and have established relationships through the comment section. I mean, I think the comment section of websites are one of the best untapped resources for content and information and making connections that's out there. Um, oh my God! And some of the best conversations, <laughs> some of the best conversations are in the comment section. Um, but I also like to run a blog, a blog hop on the website, um, which always it's always the last Wednesday of the month, and I'm always shocked at how quickly the last Wednesday of the month comes up because I'm wondering what's going on with my life. How do, where did August go? Or we're back to the last Wednesday of the month. But it's really fun there because I put like what's essentially a widget on my um, blog. And you can just type in a URL or a, a link to your website, and then you can click around and visit other people's websites because we're on social media to be social, and part of that is visiting other people's websites, being a good steward of the place, being polite, you know, leaving comments in other places, and it's been helpful for me. But at least I know on the last Wednesday of every month, I'm going to have a concentrated focus of 15 or 18 different websites on that page at that one time, and I can just click through very efficiently, cup of tea. And, and read all of their stuff, leave comments, and then I know on the last Wednesday of every month I've at least canvassed those websites. Otherwise, time can pass and you can realize I haven't really gone to other people's websites mm -hmm. to connect with them. How could I expect them to come to my website and leave comments and like things and tweet things out for me if I'm not doing it for them? So, um, you know, I guess I've always thought of my website as my home, and so I try to take care of it, I guess, and produce content for it. I don't know, was that your original question, or was it? <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. 
I think that's such a good point that I forget about. Like so many times I go onto Facebook or I go onto Twitter and I just like, I'm just scrolling. I'm just reading. I'm not. And then I walk away frustrated and I walk away like feeling bad because somebody else just wrote 37,000 words or whatever. And I'm not because I'm on Twitter. And like the, the, idea of like going and making yourself engage in a way like going to those websites that you never go to or going mm -hmm. to the Facebook pages of the people who always comment on your Facebook page that's a great that's a great tip that's I'm doing that tomorrow <laughs> thank you one of the things that I have done is I've added the Feedly app to my browser and my um, iPad and I add blogs to it that I like to follow and I just sit down usually one day a week and go through all the blog posts that I've missed and I schedule them into my buffer so that blog posts that I really enjoyed will tweet out or Facebook out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go into magic. The world like magic. <laughs> go out to the ether and you know some of it's I really like TV and movies on top of books and so I, I like to follow AV Club and sometimes I just really like something that they've been posting about whether it's Marvel or you know Agent Carter or whatever and so I schedule those posts to go out because I like that and a lot of the people who read my books like the same things I like so Really? Hmm. Unless you're verified, right? Is that is that correct? Right. I believe so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It changes. So much always changes that yeah. I have to go back and double check. But yeah. Oh my gosh! Let's go, oh. let's, go, let's solve that problem, Cody. Let's go solve that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We all need to go follow Cody so that she can follow more people. <laughs> right now. Well, and I think that's you know to the point that that Julie was making that Hugh Howie made. You know, the only thing you control is your content on something like your blog or your personal mailing list, and that's the frust that exactly what you said right there is the frustrating thing is Twitter can create these random rules where you can't follow a certain number of people in relation to the number of people that follow you, you know, that kind of thing. So it's frust it, that's kind of the dark side and frustrating side of, of social media is that we're not as much as we want to think we're in control of it and have sort of a schedule for it and, and know how to use it, we're not in control of it. So. I think that it's that's part of why there's this been this rise of effectiveness of the of the newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's just yeah. become so much more effective because the rules don't change every four minutes, right? So right, and you own those emails. So if you have people subscribing yeah. to your newsletter, you can download the emails from whatever your newsletter services. If you use Mailchimp or Aweber, um, you know you can download those and own them and <laughs> send out. Something from your Google account if you need. To. I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. With the power, very powerful feeling. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like we are coming up kind of on our hour, um, which we usually try to hold it to an hour. This is such an interesting topic. We could probably go for three hours <laughs> and just keep chatting social media. Um, any final questions from anybody as we wrap up? Anything that you know you really wanted to, to address that we did not cover? Just to remember to have fun with social media. It can feel like a job sometimes, and and social is you know you're supposed to be socialized. It's hard for introverts to socialize sometimes, and most of us are introverts. But just remember that if you're not having fun, you might need to take a step back and take a deep breath and reevaluate what you're doing because you should be having some fun. Yeah, there's a great post. I'll um, I'll put it in the the notes for this show. But um, I think it was Rachel Thompson from Bad Redhead Media wrote a post about if, if you hate social media, you're probably doing it wrong. Oh, uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> um, um, so, and she's got some good points in there. But I, I do think remembering to have fun with it and remembering you don't have to jump on the next thing that comes out and just to do the pieces that are comfortable for you, you know, whatever that is. 
Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, I would say, can you guys hear me? Yeah, uh-huh. yes. Yes. I would say it's okay, to, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to get burned out. I really drop in um, productivity over the summer months. I do. I, my kids are home from school. I've got four of them. So it's okay to unplug. It's okay to not check in. It's okay to take a break. You can even post, put a tweet out, goodbye Twitter. I'll see you next week. Otherwise, I think you're burned. It's easy to get burned out. I think it's okay to take an exit for a while and recharge. I don't know. If you are going to engage with something that is political or is in some way going to to offend somebody, do something like that, you're going to have to just embrace that that's what you're doing. You're making a choice. And for some people, that's a choice they're very comfortable making. And for some people, it's a choice they're not comfortable making at all. So I think Mm -hmm. it depends on your comfort level. And to know going into it, you know, I think to think about, I think it is smart to think about what you're posting and know if you're posting something kind of volatile that you might be taking on, you know, negative comments and and definitely you would want to not do that all the time because who wants to feel beat up on social media all the time so yeah being very aware of it it's a really awkward and awful situation when you feel like you're when you're the you're joining a chorus about something and then suddenly you know your personal page your whatever is getting you know totally trolled and whatever I mean it's like it's a real do I want, can I do this? Can I be a person that does this? Is this comfortable for me? It is, it, it's a choice for everybody to make. It's not one that I think I could make for anybody else. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much um, for being on. And again, we could talk for hours about this. Um, and it's just really great to get lots of different perspectives. And um, I know I've t- got some takeaways, especially about things like Goodreads oh. that I will be using like immediately. <laughs> Um, but what we want to do just to sort of close out, um, just go around again, um, we'll just give your name, how to reach you, so your favorite social media contact or your blog, um, and then if there's anything that you would like to promo, if you have a book coming out or an event coming up or um, a post you're really excited about on your blog, um, let us know, you know, what that is. So I will start with Cody, because she's all the way on the end of my screen, and I'll work over. <laughs> I'm excited about that one. I've been following it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I have too. I, I, since I saw who was on this group, I, it, it looks great. Your series, your new series, looks great. Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's your no. Awesome. All right. How about you, Molly? Um, you can reach me, I'm Molly OK Writes on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, you can reach me through my new website. I just got a brand new website. It's very fancy. <laughs> um, and then I have a new book coming out in October um, under the name M. O'Keefe, super secretive. Uh, <laughs> that's called Everything I Left Unsaid, and it's the first in a new sort of erotic series about a woman. Um, it's pretty fun. It's about a woman on the run from an abusive husband, and she moves into this trailer, and she picks up a cell phone that somebody left behind, and she starts this very dangerous relationship with the guy on the other end. Oh, shut the front door. 
I've been calling it the phone sex book. It's just it's mostly it's just phone sex, mostly <laughs> phone sex. So yes. And this has been amazing. Thank you for asking me to come, truly. And I, Julie, I, your your lists and your calendar were inspiring, totally inspiring. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and with that, I will kick it over to Julie. Julie. Oh, okay, hi. Well, this has just been so much fun. I wish we could do this every night. This has been fantastic. Thank you. Um, I would say you can reach me at um, this little thingy here, julievalerie.com. Um, or on Twitter, Julie underscore Valerie. Um, and that made me think of something. If you go to JulieValerie.com, right on my front page, which is something I wish other people would do, you'll see a list of all the different places you can um, contact me on social media. As a book blogger, when I'm talking about books, if I want to send a tweet out in support of other people and, and book releases and things, I'll sometimes flop, go over to their um, website and I can't find an easy place in a split second on the front page of what the Twitter handle is and how I can um, you know, connect to them with social media. So just a tip there, I would you can reach me at um, julievalerie.com and right front and center all my other um, social media sites are listed and maybe it's a tip for other people to do as well. That way it's super convenient for people when they land on your website they see other places to find you. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Yeah, thanks for being here. here. Um, and definitely a great tip. So ending with a really good tip there, because you want people to know how to find you. So awesome. Um, Alexis, how about you? Hi, Alexis Ann. You can find me at alexisannbooks.com. I'm right in the middle of releasing my Tempt serial. Uh, volume 3 is coming out one day. <laughs> 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 one day soon. So just follow my blog and you'll know when it comes out. All right. And Julia? I'm a, I'm a whole mess of identity confusion right now. Um, <laughs> I'm Julia Kelly and uh, this fall I've got some stuff coming up um, that I can't talk about yet, but um, you can find me on Julia Kelly Writes just on the lower third there. Um, I'm also Vivian Thorne and I'm actually wrapping up a serial. Um, the first book Depending on what platform you read on, uh, either release today or release tomorrow or release, release next week for various reasons. Um, I had some uh, pre-order issues with some people. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's part four. That's wrapping up. I'm finishing up the end of the, the serial, um, hopefully tonight, actually, after this conversation. Oh my gosh, it's uh, not over. And then... So the whole thing is going to be done by October 1st, so it's very exciting. Um, and uh, that's uh, all of that stuff is, uh, you can find everything about it on vivianthorne.com. Um, and that's pretty much me. Awesome. Um, again, my name is Mary Chris Escobar. You can find me on my lower third, marychrisescobar.com. Um, and I will actually, instead of promoing a book, since Julie mentioned the James River Writers Conference, nobody can see this, but I'll post a link. Um, the James River, James River Writers Conference here in Richmond, Virginia is coming up in October. Um, I believe Julie, nod your head, you'll be there. Yes? Alexis and I will definitely be there as well. We're actually presenting a master class beforehand on self-publishing, um, and we're both on a couple panels. So if anybody is watching or listening to this and can get to Richmond, Virginia, October 16th through 18th, um, we're, it's a really fabulous conference. It's a small, smaller conference, so you really get a chance to interact with presenters. Um, and Richmond is a fabulous town. We have a lot of amazing craft beer and food, as I've mentioned 50 times today. Um, <laughs> it's really good. You get it. You we like it. there beer. last October. <laughs> <laughs> and it's beautiful in the fall uh, in Virginia. So if anybody uh, is listening or, and can make it, we'll post a link to the conference and would love to see you there. Again, thank you all so much uh, for coming. We would love, yes, uh, we would love to have any of you back anytime um, and continue this conversation or another awesome conversation. So thank you so much um, for being here, um, Cody and Julie and Molly, and um, to everyone who's watching and listening, thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Yeah.